Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. South Africa needs research to improve its mining competitiveness, the industry needs to recover faster, and investigations are needed in the Modiqua bus killings. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer unpacks the headlines. Welcome, Martin. Hi, Stephanie. Now, South Africa has to reclaim its mining competitiveness. How do we do that? You know, our competitiveness was strong in the past, uh, and we lost that because uh, in 1994, the Comro uh, institute that did a lot of research was uh, combined with the CSIR and it became a public institution rather than a private mm -hmm. sector institution. And those 600 people that used to work flat out there in Carlo Road, they dissipated around the world and other people got the benefit o of that mm -hmm. research. And we saw the CSIR try to come forward but it was unsuccessful. We are now in a situation where we have among the hardest rock in the world underground and we have among the narrowest reefs underground and we have the greatest depths <laughs> underground. And unless we come up with a solution, mining at that level is not going to be economic. But if we do come up with a solution, we then become the world player because the world hasn't reached those levels yet by a long shot. So we could be the brains, the minds that actually enable activities to take place economically at great depth, irrespective of the environment. I mean, you know, 220 megapascals is pretty hard rock, but uh, probably you won't have that sort of hardness mm. around the world. But still, the narrowness of the reef, you might not have that, but you'll be have this situation where, you know, great depth, uh, temperatures, all the other aspects of working at that level, getting down there efficiently, moving underground efficiently, coming out efficiently, we will be doing it ahead of everybody else, which puts us in a competitive advantage. We can start selling that know-how. So we'll not only save ourselves, particularly the gold and platinum mines, which they're in a bad way. I mean, they're heading for a cliff. Yeah. You know, they're, they're going to come tumbling down in the next dec or decade or two if there's not an intervention. But if there is, I mean, we can even start looking at those areas of mining that were left out because of depth. For instance, you know, what they call the Potchefstroom mm -hmm. Gap and the Boerteville Gap, you know, those have just been left because they're, they're too difficult to, to navigate and other areas that were easier were taken first. But anything would be possible for us. We're already mining at four kilometers. You know, uh, we just got to make sure we do that safely. We do that economically and modernness has to come into it, modernization and revival. And we hope that um, we will achieve that going forward. And how do we get South Africa to get on track to being the sunrise industry? You see, we had that fantastic um, uh, s speech by the uh, new president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, at the State of the Nation speech saying that, you know, my, uh, mining can be a sunrise industry and we should strive for that. So I agree it can be a sunrise industry. But we also have to take some short-term measures, <laughs> otherwise there's going to be an eclipse. Mm -hmm. And we see now some what looked like forward movement suddenly becoming backward steps. Uh, what looked like an era where we wouldn't fight uh, the government in court, suddenly now we're going to fight it in court. So that's going to delay a lot of investment and also probably delay you know, the charter coming through as quickly as we thought it would because um, you'll still have the situation where the, the once empowered, always empowered clause is going to be contested again, as well as other things relating to, to that charter. So one looks at it and thinks, well, look, there's going to be a long extension again because the Department of Mineral Resources has said they're going to go and appeal. Mm -hmm. Now, people in the know say to get to the <laughs> Supreme Court, the appeal court, it's probably going to take a year or so, <laughs> so just to get in there to debate this is going to take a long time. In the meantime, we need action now. You know, uh, I'm aware of people going into international communities, investment mm -hmm. communities. They've been trying to roll out a scenario where they can say, look, time to go, time to invest in, in South Africa's mining. Now they'll just be marking time again. And uh, in this hour of need, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, we might not get a resolution. There is that situation of the general election in the background, and you've got uh, new leadership of the African National Congress, the ruling party, wanting to put its best foot forward at those elections and wanting to get as big a majority as it can. This might be behind some of the delaying action 
that we're seeing. It, it could be politics. Mm. Uh, so again, politics yeah. is, is causing a, a delay in a possible revival. Hopefully, you know, the, the, the rand will weaken again. It seems to be on a weakening phase again because the dollar is strengthening. That might just be a saving grace. You know, we had the situation when Cyril Ramaphosa was uh, elected by the African National Congress as its leader and became president of South Africa. We suddenly had a strong currency, and that is a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was good, but it was bad. Mm -hmm. It was bad for the mining industry that needed a, a softer currency. But perhaps we're heading for that again. You see the dollar strengthening. Maybe there will be a saving period for the platinum and gold industry particularly, which gets very, very hard hit in these times. And maybe there'll just be a way of marking time until everything is ready to set us on a proper course. But this is a, a setback at the moment, and mm. we need to look at it because um, you, you could miss the next commodities boom. <laughs> like we, we missed yeah. the last one. It's not going to wait for you because it's a global activity. Mm. And it'll be terrible if that happens. Now, has there been further information on the motives for the bombing of the Modigua miners on the bus that they were traveling in? Yeah, I'm disappointed in, in the sort of uh, you know headline grabbing at the start because it was horrific. This mm. was something really shocking happening in the mining industry where you've got mine workers in a bus and people pretending to be mine workers enter into that bus and they petrol bomb it and and you know so many people injured so many people dead we have seen the court case there was a plea that we have a, a, a legal mining unit formed to combat or a crime unit formed to combat mm. illegal mining we haven't heard anything about it it just seems to be slipping away we see a few headlines coming through the court cases who's appeared in court so obviously that is continuing hopefully within there we try and get to the motive what is the motive of these people why did they act in such hor horrific fashion could it be that they really want to, to intimidate these miners to a point where these people were terrified to mm. go to work if that were the case, were they terrified to go to work, why would they want to terrify them to that extent? Is it possibly because they have syndicates that want to enter those mines and start mining them illegally? Because we're getting feedback from that area where the illegal mining activity is horrific, you know, both on the surface and we, there were whisperings about, you know, uh, Madikwa uh, some time ago. Uh, where local shouts were being made, you know, if you don't want to make this mine work, get out. We will make it work. And you notice that the chiefs there pleaded with the mine owners mm. to please stay on because it, it means so much to that community at the formal level. But there seem to be people at an informal level that feel they could take over, you know. And we know that when mines are abandoned like that that is when you know illegal miners can enter them yeah. sometimes they've got better equipment than, mm. than the miners or they take over that equipment so the motives there look very bad to me and i think that we should not let this slip under the carpet that's why it's important for you to raise it again and we will raise it until we find out exactly who these people are why they did this and who's behind there because there's always some mr big in the background mm because they stand to, to make a lot of money if they can get that out through illegal mining activity, uh, pay those illegal miners below the rate, and then sell at the rate. You know, their margin just enlarges. So I would love to um, make sure that we get to the bottom of that, and, and we will keep looking at that. Thanks for speaking with us, Mark. Great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.